Hey there, I'm Maddie from ATA Wizard and today I'm going to be going through the VCA Psychology Unit 3 area of study number one and dot point number six, which states the explanatory power of the transactional model of stress and coping to explain stress as a psychological process with primary and secondary uh, Appraisal. So we're going to be going through that with reference to the Complete Psychology Units 3 and 4 Notes Package, which you can purchase via the link in the description. And you can also grab one-on-one -on -one tutoring with me via the link in the description. So I look forward to seeing you there. In the meantime, let us get started. So the Transactional Model of Stress and Coping, which was created by Richard Lazarus and Susan Folkman. So the transactional model acknowledges the way in which a person responds to a stressor in a unique and dependent manner on in terms of how they interpret the stressor. So it acknowledges that everyone is going to interpret a stressor in a different way and it looks at how these different ways can be described. So the model is composed of two kinds of appraisal, being primary and secondary appraisal. So primary appraisal is when a person determines the significance of the event. So you're working out how significant the event is. They interpret it in the categories of either irrelevant, stressful, or benign slash positive. Then they appraise it as harm, loss, threat, or challenge. So only if it's considered stressful do they go on to these stages. So the irrelevant is meaning not meaningful or relevant to the person or related, so it's got nothing to do with you, it's irrelevant. Stressful means the event is a harm slash loss, threat or challenge to the person. So again, going down to these three things. And benign positive means the event can potentially benefit the person or doesn't pose any potential negative impact on them. So benign positive is you're seeing the event and you're thinking, hey, like this could be a really great thing. Like you, you might have a psychology sack, but you're thinking, you know, I can use this as an opportunity to do really, really well. And that would make it a benign positive thing. So harm loss is when a person believes that they have Harm loss is when a person believes that they've already lost something or become disadvantaged in some way by the event. Threat is when a person believes they might lose something potentially in the future because of the event. And challenge is when a person decides that the event is something they could experience growth or gain from. So it's stressful, but it's a challenge. It's an opportunity to prove something. Um, so now after this primary appraisal, secondary appraisal occurs. And this is when a person will evaluate the options and tools they have and decide if they have the ability to cope with the stressor. So if they do not perceive the ability to cope, this will result in stress. So secondary appraisal is essentially, can I cope? So having the resources to cope means that the person feels they can deal with the event and is therefore not considered a stressor. And not having the resources to cope means that the person does not feel that they're able to deal with the stressor. And in consequence, they will experience stress. So not having the resources to cope equals stress. The process of appraisals is visually demonstrated in the diagram below. So we've got primary appraisal, which you determine if the thing is irrelevant, stressful or benign slash positive. Then if it is stressful, you decide if it is a challenge, a threat or a harm slash loss. Then you go into secondary appraisal. So then you might decide either you have the resources to cope or that you do not have the resources to cope. Now, if you don't have the resources to cope, that is what is going to result in stress. Now, the explanatory power of this model is that it accounts for how the psychological response to stress differs between individuals, which is a positive. It considers stress as an interaction between an individual and their environment. However, it doesn't impact for the biological impacts of stress, whereas like the gas model looks at how stress can really wear you down and make you sick by the time you are in that exhaustion stage, but this doesn't have an equivalent to that. 
Uh, it has a quality of nature, which makes the response difficult to measure. It's as in it's difficult to tell at what point you go from which appraisal to the next and at what point you make all these decisions. Um, primary and secondary appraisals can also occur simultaneously. So in terms of looking at the steps in the model, that's not necessarily how it occurs in reality. So that is it for this episode. Again, you can grab these notes via the link in the description and you can do private tutoring with me and you can book that also via the link in the description. Now, I next episode, we are gonna be going over um, unit three, area of study one, dot point number seven, where we will talk about approach and avoidance strategies for coping with stress. So I look forward to seeing you there. Bye.